A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way in from the country, and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. Then they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him. Dividing up his clothes, they cast lots to see what each would get. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The written notice of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. Mark, chapter 15, verses 21 to 26. I'm standing on the seafront at Bogner, just on the corner here of Lennox Street. And this blue plaque commemorates the site where Billy Butlin first had his Butlin's amusement shelter. There were dodgems, later on there was a zoo, and there were one armed bandits. And today it's a amusement casino. <laughs> they have these 500 pounds slot machines here. They are controlled by the Gaming Act of 2005, which replaced the Gambling Act of 1968. And most of these places now place the payout at 70%. Apparently some pubs choose to set their machines to pay out at 78%. When Jesus was crucified, the Roman soldiers had a game of chance. They gambled for his clothing. It was the only thing that he had that was worth anything. And it was a bit of a perk of the job that the Roman soldiers were able to have his clothing. So they cast lots. We don't know precisely what kind of game that they played in order to see who would win. Part of the shame of crucifixion was having to carry your own cross down the street. And that is what happened with Jesus from the palace to Golgotha. Well, after the terrible flogging that Jesus had received, and after the night that he'd had, he didn't have the strength himself to carry it. And so a man was press ganged to carry it for him. Simon of Cyrene, which is in North Africa. You know, it's interesting that there are lots of occasions where even people that are healed miraculously don't get a name check in Mark's Gospel. And here Mark not only tells us the name of this guy, but of his sons also, Alexander and Rufus. Was that because Alexander and Rufus were well known in the local church that Mark is first writing to? In Romans chapter 16 verse uh, 13, it talks about a Rufus, where Paul wants to send greetings to the church in Rome. So was it that they, these guys were known? There must be some reason why Mark specifically identifies this person. It's almost as though he's saying, do you know what, if you want to check out any of these eyewitness statements, you can go and ask these guys, they're still around. Well, Jesus, takes his cross and is crucified. It's remarkable in some respects how little information we're told about the horrific nature of crucifixion. Roman citizens weren't crucified. It was for the enemies of Rome and it acted as a huge deterrent. So outside of the city, those who were crucified would serve as a reminder that rebelling against Rome is just not worth it because this is what we'll do to you. 
So the clothing of Jesus was gambled for. You know, this is all fulfills prophecy. In Psalm 22, there are so many prophecies that Jesus then fulfills in his crucifixion. He doesn't accept the narcotic wine drink that would have dulled the pain. He has all of his wits still at his disposal for what he's going to do. The notice that they put up the charge says the king of the Jews and it's fascinating how King David in his Psalm 22 talks about King Jesus the king of the Jews you know that charge sheet should contain all of the sins that you and I have ever done and will do in the future that Jesus has covered by his death if we trust in him. Father, thank you so much that Jesus was prepared to go through the horrific shame and agony of crucifixion. Thank you that he paid for my debt of not having loved you as I should, have committed high treason against you, Lord God. My sin must be so serious that it cost Jesus so much to cancel that debt. Thank you for the amazing love that you show me. Amen.